Good morning and welcome back to the One Celtic Fans View Celtic FC News this morning. And in this morning's news, we talk about Martin Dale at Livingston and he gives a bit of a respect to Celtic. We'll talk about him. We'll talk about Carl Starfelt sitting at the back. He could have went Christmas shopping. Man United and Barcelona are heating up in the race for Joseph Juranovic. We talk a little bit about that again in Celtic FC transfer news. And then we'll look at the comment section. Once again, we'll look at the comment section and see what you've been saying on yesterday's videos. So let's get into the video. First of all, La Liga Giants Barcelona are looking at a £20 million offer for Juranovic. But it's looking like Barcelona will have to sell someone first but due to the fair play rules that La Liga have set Barcelona due to the fact that they're £1 billion Euros in debt. So... Barcelona, personally, I think that Juranovic should go to Barcelona. And if he does go to Barcelona, the next time that Barcelona are down in Elche playing, I'm going to go up and I'm going to try and get an interview with Juranovic after he leaves Celtic and joins Barcelona. That would be a cracker. Anyway, Man United, they're looking to spend £200 million this transfer window. And they're putting Juranovic as an option, but... He's going to be playing backup, and this is one reason that I don't think that Juranovic should go to Barcelona, uh, should go to Man United, because he's basically going to go to Man United, and he's going to be fighting for his place, and he's going to be backup to a player. I think if he goes to Barcelona, he will go straight into the team at Barcelona, and that's one reason that I think that he should go to Barcelona over going to Manchester United. In other news... Martin Dale at Livingston has been talking about Celtic, and we're going about him just now. So he's basically going on about the way that Celtic are approaching the game against Livingston on Wednesday evening. He says, it's brilliant for the staff and the players at the club. It's a difficult job. Everyone thinks it's easy sitting in a certain type of shape. We've gone to Ibrox and Parkhead and played wingers, four at the back and then three and three and attacking central midfield players and you get into an all 10 low possession wise you need to look at the back look back to the Real Madrid game he says where for the first 60 minutes Celtic had Real Madrid pinned back and then we all know what happened to Real Madrid they just upped their game and then just took control as Real Madrid do he basically went on to say that it's a great game plan from Livingston and it shows that the respect that they are getting from the Celtic management team that Celtic are putting a bit more effort into the way that they play against Livingston and he says that he reckons that the, the bogey team that Livingston once were and have been over the years looks like it's disappeared. Is that all about mind games? Celtic will be hoping for a bit more competition from this contest on Wednesday night rather than the match against Jim Goodwin's Aberdeen side who sat in and basically did nothing. I'm going to talk about Aberdeen slightly because Jim Goodwin yesterday um, at the press conference says what did you make of the reaction of Saturday's defeat to Celtic on about the reaction there was obviously a reaction on social media to the defeat by the Aberdeen fans and rightly so he went on to say the Aberdeen manager I was aware of the reaction after the game there are a few fans that were a little bit disgruntled in the stadium which is completely understandable when a team that you support loses a game, I think it was a little bit of frustration with our lack of attacking intent during the game. What do you mean lack of, in lack of intent? You sparked the bus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Anyway, the fans made us aware after the game what they thought, and that's absolutely fine, the Aberdeen manager went on to say. Fans pay good money to come and support their team, and when they're not happy with what they've seen, they're entitled to uh, express their opinion. So, the next question that the Aberdeen manager faced was, are you tempted to change formation for tomorrow night? Jesus. And he went on to say, I don't think the formation is the big talking point for me. The system that we were playing, hold on to this, was 3-5-2. <laughs> right, right. Okay, good one. We'll see what you say tonight. We're going to do a, a video tonight around about five six o'clock and that would be just an update video so make sure that you tune in for that later today so the breaking news today is that barcelona is ready to make a 20 million or 20 million pounds offer for joseph Juranovic. 
Will he go to Manchester United? Will he go to Barcelona? With only 11 days left until the transfer window opens on January the 1st. Will Joseph Juranovic even be at Celtic on January 1st? Will he be at Celtic for the Sevco game? I have said it in previous videos. I think Juranovic's last game for Celtic will be a massive hun scalping game. That's something for you to look forward to. And if you haven't seen a lot of goals for hun scalping, check out the video that's at the end of this video. So let's jump into the comment section and see what people were saying with the video yesterday. And it's good to see you all commenting and talking away in the comment section. Thank you for that. It's great for the channel. So first up we have, if I click here, Donny Boy. Might be a good move for Welsh. Yesterday we spoke about Stephen Welsh potentially leaving Celtic in the transfer window. Donny Boy says it might be a good move for Welsh to gain some regular football and experience and then come back for a challenge for the to challenge for his first team. I think he's at the age now where going out, and going out on loan isn't really an option. I'm sure Callum McGregor was a bit younger when he went out on loan and then came back. I think he's he's got to a certain standard of play and I don't think that the manager sees him progressing too much as a player. Hence the reason that I think that Celtic will let him go. Gara6283 says, put Welsh out on loan to get game time and see how he plays given a run of games. I was surprised at Aberdeen's tactics, 11 men pound the ball and no shots on target. We'll see how they set themselves up for the game uh, tonight as they play the Sevco. And the next one is, I personally think that the player Welsh, I can't see Celtic releasing it through lack of game time. I think that um, letting them go out on loan, letting them go to Italy, would be a, a fantastic option for him. Yes, and it's true what you say. Hickey, Ferguson have all done fantastic in Italy. And Patrick McLaughlin, we should be looking at another midfielder and looking to release either Gucci and McCarthy. The thing is, I don't think McCarthy will be going anywhere this transfer window due to the fact he has a hamstring injury. How on earth did James McCarthy manage to get a hamstring injury? This is the question that should be asked. Did he try to run to the loo or something? Anyway. Edward Diver says, Hail, hey, mate. This is a new format. It's going far better. I can see the channel going from strength to strength and deserve the soul. Keep up the good work. One of the best and most informative of them all. Thank you for that. Edward. Johnny Boy 83 says, I love how raging they are after Goodwin's comments that they may change for their visit. I think that uh, we'll see... We'll see. We'll see if they change. We'll see if Aberdeen change. I won't even be watching the game, so I'll um I might switch on for five minutes just to see if they've actually changed formation. But I'm sure when I go into Twitter, you'll see the full extent of the rage of the zombies. Dim sum. That was disgraceful parking the bus at Aberdeen. It wasn't even football. They were just parking the whole team to try and stop us. I fully agree on the transfer stuff. I don't think the big fella is going to get sucked into that crap. Yeah, um, Andrew Postcoglu won't get sucked into the with um, the transfer bidding wars for players. I think he makes his mind up early and makes his moves early. With 11 days to go to the transfer window opens, I think that's why teams are positioning themselves for the Juranovic and seeing how interested he is. Obviously, he's not said anything. He's not been back at Celtic yet. I fully expect him to come back and say that he has 100% committed to Celtic. But it'll be the same way he will say that in public and the club will know that if the right offer comes in, he's off. It's as simple as that. So I hope you've enjoyed the comment section. Tune in for a tea time special this evening before the Sevco game. We'll see what news is coming out. There should be some more updates regarding the Juranovic story. And we'll be looking out for that. For On that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans. Thanks for watching this Celtic Transfer News Bulletin early in the morning. I shall see you on the next video.